I wanted to apologize perhaps to some of you who may have taken offense to my last several videos. I have been told that I have co I come off a little bit more negative than usual lately and that it has been perhaps off-putting to some degree. And for those of you who have either emailed me or else put that in the comments, I want to thank you because the, although I can sound and am stubborn, I do listen to feedback and I'm, I'm thankful for it. But I also wanted to address something today that I think is the source of some misunderstanding. Now, the reason this is a tell-all channel is because it flows from me. The only thing that I do claim credit for, I don't claim credit for OMAD, I don't claim credit for, I'm just a vessel, I'm just a channel, and I say that in the sense of a conduit, to, to come to terms with life. And one of the things that surprises me is how so many of you, anytime I put a video out that's not directly related to fasting, you people say, well, why? what does this have to do with fasting? So if I put out a video on self-improvement or life or if I, if I make reference to the Bible or politics or atheism or something that may not be directly related, you, you say, well, what does I have to do with it? Well, that's part of the problem because you're not understanding that the strength to, to lose weight, the strength to beat an addiction comes from the ability to divorce yourself from all of the things that led you to the obsession of food. And that's where this channel goes, my own obsession of food. I started out talking about, when I started the channel, about how, how much of a glutton I was. That's me. But the problem is, if that's the way you once were, it's the way you can very often be the other way. You can go too far. And so I know the dangers of extremes, and some of you don't quite understand them. So today's video is on the polarity problem and fasting and denial. What is the polarity problem? Well, I just explained it. When you are an addict or you have the potential or have been an addict, that potential to mess up, it can flip the same way a person can go from being a very good person to a very bad person. A person can go from being a saint to a sinner to a, a life preserver to a life taker. That same potential exists in each of you. And I have said in another video not to call yourself an addict, and I believe that because you are what you think you are. You are as young or as strong or as healthy as you think you are. But there's still a sense in which you have to acknowledge vulnerability, the same way you have to acknowledge the power of a strong storm. Nature has the last laugh. Nature will kill you. It will also lift you up and better you. So that's what I'm talking about with the polarity problem. And this is what some of you miss. And you, as a result of that, you fast in denial. Now, what do I mean by fasting and denial? You do things that you think are to help with weight loss, but they're really to help with your ego and your own sense of insecurity. Let me give you some examples here. First of all, I get lots of questions about two and three day fasts and complete fasts and water fasts and other things. And I get lots of emails from people who want to try different things. And they say, well, I can do five days. I can do seven days. I had one girl do 40 days because apparently because of me and her religious convictions. That's, that's absolutely fascinating, but it's not necessarily going to help with the same thing. If you came to this channel like so many did, uh, some of you who are bingers, some of you who have eating problems, that isn't going to help you. A dry fast is not going to help you. A, a two to three day um, super water only fast and then a day followed by splurging is not going to help you. And while I'm on that topic, yes, you can eat three day or you can uh, uh, fast three days and then splurge on the fourth or eat uh, fast two days and then splurge on the third and you'll lose weight no problem. The problem is you'll also destabilize your insulin levels and you will cause your stomach to stretch out to where when you eat, you're basically going to have to go on a crazy binge. So you can, and I have done this and I have tried this, I have tried it even recently, going back in the last few, mo few months here and there off and on, where I would fast completely for two days, three days, four days, and barely even have water, and then eat a whole lot. But I found every time I did that, I did not feel, my stomach did not feel right. 
and so I came I came to I knew the lesson that it wasn't a good idea even though uh, it was Elijah Muhammad who actually said that you will if you if you eat once every three days you're gonna live a thousand years now I'm sorry but that's that's incorrect but the, what know what's not going to help you the reason going on a three-day fast is no better than going on a one-day fast is because it's easier to maintain stability on a one-day fast it's harder on a three-day fast so if you if you want to eat one meal or a long big series of meals or have a grazing day once every few days you're not necessarily helping weight loss you will lose weight but you will also be provoking your body and I've noticed a lot of you do that. You provoke your body with, by throwing out extreme measures. The whole point in my conception of OMAD, my giving it to you for free on this channel, is so that you can better your life. And every time I have attempted to go longer than 1.5 days, I find that it is harder. I, it exerts, I have to exert more energy to upkeep it. So yes, you can fast every two or three days, but even though you're going to not retain as much water and you're going to feel thinner, feel thinner. It's not a good way to, to think about being thin. It doesn't matter if you feel thin. Not really. But when you're doing that, you're making it harder in your body. And you're going to start getting, your stomach's going to have to stretch out to hold more food. And then your body, your digestive system is going to be shocked when you have to, when you go days without eating. And then all of a sudden you eat a lot. It's just not a good idea. That's the first thing. Another way people fast in denial is by taking too long, having too big eating windows. The reason you instinctively choose a larger eating window is so that you can satiate that ravenous hunger that is that comes from too much insulin circulating in your system. Whereas if you had one short meal period or one short window, you would find that in time you would adjust and you would feel more satiated. The only sense in having a long eating window is if you are one of these usually ladies, not always, but usually ladies, who can only nibble on little bits at a time, and they can't, it takes four hours to eat the equivalent of 800 calories. There are people like that. I'm definitely not one of them. I could never do a long window because I could put away in six hours what a lot of people could put away in a uh, uh, much longer time. So, but when you do that, you're still kidding yourself. And then, and then you, you fast in denial by taking too large, getting too large of a meal. You say, I'm going to eat one meal a day, I'm going to lose weight, but it's going to be a huge meal. Well, if you do that, you're just, you're just in denial about your progress. Other ways people do this are with uh, taking supplements, attempting to do um, beverages that take away hunger. That, by the way, folks, is why I don't support stuff like butter coffee or bone broth or stuff like that because it convinces people to think that they can beat hunger. You cannot beat hunger because you need to go through that so that you learn the necessary lessons of restraint and self-control and hunger high that will sustain you when you're going through for months. And that's why when people contact me and they're utterly shocked at how hungry they are, perhaps for the first time in a while, I tell them that's that's a good thing. That's why it makes me nervous when people say, well, I'm old man is easy. I don't have to worry about this at all. That's not a good sign because it means you're not really going through hunger. You're denying your, your, you're being dishonest with yourself. You're saying, I've got this in the bag. This is easy. No, it's not easy. It's not easy long term. Once you get past that first month hurdles and all the little hurdles that, that you overcome as you're getting started, you're going to find that the challenges, those challenging days are going to be there. That those struggles are going to be there. Don't cheat yourself out on that and don't tell yourself, I'm going to make it to where it's not so bad. I know it's nature, it's human nature to say, I want to eat in a way that will get less insulin. That's become a popular notion nowadays. People say, I need to eat in a way where I'm not going to have as much insulin. So I need to eat low carb or I need to eat this way. That's fine if you want to do that. But you're going to find that if you, if you have any denial in the process at all, you're going to start struggling. You're going to struggle later on down the road. So you don't want to exchange a problem for a problem. And let me give you an example. I, I just talked to a lady not too long ago. And she said, well, I used to smoke and I, I used to be pretty thin. Should I start smoking to lose weight? At first I thought she was joking, but she was absolutely serious. 
and I was I was absolutely stunned. That would be like saying I can eat all I want, but I but I get to, I I can throw it up afterwards. Are you seeing why I sometimes get heated on these extremes? Because when you whether you're fasting for a bunch of days without end and torturing and provoking your body, or whether you're saying whether you're hoping to replace one addiction for another, you're not really solving the problem. You aren't really getting to the issue of the the broken nature that is within you that allowed you to become a binge eater, binge eater that allowed me to become a binge eater. The lesson Joe Holman needed to learn was that there's a time for everything under heaven. The same lesson that Solomon taught in Ecclesiastes 3. That it took me so many years to see that you can enjoy something but only so much. Reminds me of another friend who he used to go to bars and get in trouble and get in fights. He had an extensive criminal record and every time he would go in a bar, trouble would find him. Some guy would want to fight him. He's, he was the equivalent of what someone would say, and he called, these are his words, not mine, trailer trash, because that's, that was the life that he pursued, and he would be, right now, if he heard me saying that, he'd be sitting here laughing about it with me. He, by the way, is 45 minutes from here. It's funny how the brain thinks of those details. But he became Christian, born-again Christian, as they say. But what did he really do? The story is, not, is, is kind of bittersweet because he became a member of a fundamentalist Christian church and he became hardcore. And he became, don't you dare take the Lord's name in vain to his kids. Well, the latter end with this guy is not particularly good because he's now inactive in his church and he's not motivated at all to do much of anything. But the problem was there all along because he went from being a guy who gets in, who provokes people in bars to a guy who provokes people in his family and in his social life, and eventually a lot went wrong. Um, this guy's a pretty good guy who can redeem himself, but just like this this friend of mine who wanted to, considered starting smoking to lose weight, these are misguided people, and I'm not looking down on them any more than I was on the last video looking down on people who fall for trends. I'm saying once you recognize those patterns in yourselves, stop it. Recognize that that error is what is causing this extreme behavior. You've got to not be a person of extremes. You've got to stop and say, I get to eat, but just, I can eat what I want, but not now. And that's why, I, so I'm not looking down on anybody. That's why Joe Holman knows that he cannot re-engineer his life to with the freedom that he wants. I know, and I knew in the beginning when I began my OMAD journey, that if I thought too long on food, I'd be right back eating, binge eating. So I said, eat and be done with it. The thing that this channel has become known for. That's why I said that. And some of you, you don't understand what I mean when I, wor when I warn you about trends, when I warn you about extremes, when I warn you about butter coffee, when I warn you about any trend that is going to sacrifice hunger. Hunger is the greatest thing since fullness. Because... You're learning a lesson that you couldn't learn any other way. That's why suffering is so good. Not too much. Not too much suffering. The right amount of suffering. And OMAD is the perfect compromise between hunger and fullness. And it will allow you to structuredly lose your weight and keep your head and have energy for your family and friends and cure or at least treat many diseases and conditions that you may be struggling with. And once you set your mind in the right place, you're going to start seeing long-term results. But if you are in denial, if you are going through your fasting journey trying to avoid discomfort, guess what? In a month, six weeks down the road, you well, you won't even make it that long. But if you do, you're still going to have those troubles ahead. So start being honest and appreciate a little more my sense of honesty on this channel. I'm not looking down on anyone. I'm saying I'm that way. And I'm saying that for those of you who are foodies and for those of you who are coming from being addicts, you need to realize those tendencies are still alive and well inside you. They can come out again, either through some extreme crazy life pattern or some new addiction. They can be there again. And just as you can beat addictions, that addiction can beat you and it can claim you. Old habits can reappear and you can be just like another friend I had who was seven years sober. And he went out and started to, he fell off the wagon and immediately, it seemed like immediately, 
Those eyes were jaundiced, yellow. All the problems that were there came right back. He ended up dying. This this was a sad, one of the more sad stories I have, and I've used him actually in a pa as a passing reference in a few different videos. You cannot play around with your weakness, and you have to be aware of the polarity problem. The fact that you have this problem of overeating, of binging to begin with, means that it can reappear or that another problem can take its place. I am not a believer in replacement addictions. So let me give you a solution for those of you recently who have emailed me and who have asked about different ways to beat extremism and yet you want to lose weight. Let's take an example. Let's say you want to lose 20 pounds. Here's how easy this is. Let's say you want to lose 20 pounds. Set yourself a very liberal goal per week, way weekly. Let's say 1.5 pounds. So 1.5 pounds, to, you want to get to lose 20 pounds. Let's say that's uh, uh, 12 weeks. So that would that brings you to 18. So you, at the end of 12, 12 weeks, add two weeks, you're where you want to be. Now, add two weeks to whatever it is you want to lose, but remember to be 10 pounds under where it is you want to be. So if you want to be at 150, 160, and you're coming from 180, well, that means you want to be 10 pounds less than that so that you give yourself some room. Set yourself on the plan and don't look back. Set yourself and hold yourself to losing about a certain amount per week, usually less than two pounds, and say, if I do that, it's good enough. And then don't change the plan. Don't jump off and start doing crazy long water fasts. Don't do any crazy rituals of suffering. Don't go out there and try to run marathons and don't do extreme things or do something that's going to overcommit you. And don't say, I'm not losing fast enough. Give it the full six weeks. So keep your perspective, but be honest with yourself. If this channel has taught you anything, I hope it is that you need to be honest with yourself at all costs, because only then can you have long-term success.